It's game three of a four game set against the Red Sox and the Yankees look to take the series. It's the game day show. Before we get to the highlights, let's take a look at the lineup and starting pitcher for today's game. Leading off, Aaron Hicks in center field. The usual leadoff guy, DJ LeMahieu, was placed on the IL this afternoon. Surgery is a possibility. Gio Urshela is at third base. He had a home run last night against the Red Sox. Batting third, Mike Talkman in right field. He is on fire. Batting fourth, Glaber Torres. He is my pick to click tonight. He's at shortstop. Batting fifth, Mike Ford, the big lefty out of Princeton. Batting sixth, Gary Sanchez. He has homered in three consecutive games. He is heating up. Batting seventh, Brett Gardner. For some reason, he's hitting ahead of Clint Frazier at DH. And batting ninth, Tyler Wade at second base. And on the mound, 37-year-old Jay Happ. Jay Happ, quite simply, has not been able to pitch a 10th this year. He comes in with a 10.29 ERA and an ugly 2.14 whip. Good to have you along with us. It's been a very lopsided season. Something for the folks at home to watch tonight. 92 miles an hour and above is great. Below, not so good. Underway in the Bronx for game yeah. three. Total of eight in just seven innings. Here's his 3-2 pitch. And he loses a cap. Things is a strike in the zone. Things is a strike. So 0 2 to ball four. The Red Sox can build on that, or maybe not. Taylor made double play ball. Wade to Torres. For 120 years. That base hit for Urshela. Talkman with a jam shot out the shallow center field. It'll drop in. Ball and a strike to Ford. That one sent out the shallow right center field. It drops in. It's going to bring in Urshela to score the game's first run. one nothing Yankees for this question. When things start going bad, and there's no denying that they're running bad for the Red Sox right now. He likes it. Made him chase one up. Gets the strikeout to strand a base runner. Oh, oh who takes a wicked hop over Javis. At one swing, it hits the bag. And instead of being an ending ground ball, inning ending ground ball is a double, an RBI double. Field, a winning player. Pilar turns on a ball and sends it into the left field corner, and that one is gone. Kansas City. But Mike Talkman can serve the opposite field with the best of them. That's his second hit of the ball game. And he's going to try to make it a double. Throw into seconds in time to get him. Good a defender is. Didn't take all plays like that. He's going to oh. score very well. And it looks like the Yankees are going to score a couple of runs here. Wedge. This time is the driver. Both on fastballs. Great swing. And Mike Ford with a little. Here's Sanchez now. And he lines the ball into left. Mouth shut and pay attention. Flewecki pops it up. Torres is there and Jay Happ spins it once. Red Sox focusing is all on pitching. Pilar sends the ball out to center for routing up the Red Sox. And we might have to get Yankees go to the bullpen. We'll be right back. And second baseman, first baseman on that side. And both rocket there. That one gets past Bogart. It's into left. <laughs> yeah, you got you're <laughs> onto something there. Well, there's only one Babe Ruth, of course, but we're having some fun here. Big difference is Babe didn't graduate from Princeton. Plin. And the quality of his at bats. Arouse picked it up in the shift and then lost the handle on it. All right, so first things first, Jay Happ tonight was much better, much better than I anticipated, much better than he has shown in a while. Uh, I thought he was changing speeds really well. I mean, he only had three strikeouts. He did have two walks, gave up the one long home run. 
but for the most part, he was getting a lot of pop-ups, a lot of soft ground balls, uh, a lot of routine fly balls to the outfield. That means he was keeping guys off balance. I like the way he was mixing his changeup. I thought his changeup looked really good tonight. Uh, he was using the fastball inside to righties. Uh, he was using it inside to lefties, too. We saw him get the double play ball early on. Uh, so I really thought that uh, Hap looked terrific. Uh, hey, look, part of it might be the Red Sox because the Red Sox are just not a good ball club. Uh, but, you know, you got to admire uh, that Hap bounced back after a couple of bad starts. So, you know, hopefully this builds on some momentum for him, but it probably keeps guys like Clark Schmidt and Debbie Garcia in the minor leagues, uh, at least for a bit longer, because he's earned another start with the way that he pitched tonight. Now, J. Hap could be a guy that the Yankees consider trading to another contender because he does have that clause in his contract that if he hits a certain innings pitched limit, then his contract is exercised for next year. Now, he probably won't get that because of COVID, and they skipped him in the uh, rotation last time around. Uh, but I'm sure that the Yankees are going to renegotiate kind of a prorated version of uh, whatever innings limit he needed to hit. So, uh, you know, it might be a good idea for the Yankees to move him somewhere uh, that can sort of manipulate that uh, and save themselves a few bucks. So, uh, yeah, good start for Jay Happ. Uh, hopefully, uh, when he, he pitches next time, he'll be able to carry that momentum forward. They mentioned on the broadcast that this was the 100th anniversary of the Negro Leagues. If you get a chance, look up the story of Josh Gibson. They talked about Satchel Paige and Josh Gibson, the battery for, I believe it was the St. Louis Grays. Uh, Josh Gibson reportedly hit a ball out of Yankee Stadium, and he was probably the most prolific hitter of the Negro Leagues. And it's a shame he never got to play in the big leagues because he was compared to a right-handed Babe Ruth. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I would have loved to have seen him play. But if you haven't heard of Josh Gibson and you missed that part of the broadcast, go ahead and hit that Wikipedia and look him up because he's uh, an amazing story. I was watching the ESPN broadcast, and I had to switch to the StatCast version because, though I love Matt Vaskurgeon as an announcer, you know, he's great on MLB The Show. I've been listening to him for years. He's been on MLB Network. He's great. But Alex Rodriguez, as a color guy, is just terrible. Every sentence is a word salad that he can't spit out of his head. He is just atrocious. He really doesn't know the Yankees as well as he pretends to. So, uh, yeah, I, it's unwatchable when he's in the booth. So uh, if you're lucky enough to have ESPN2 during these Sunday night broadcasts and you want to try that out, the StatCast broadcast was really good because they talked about exit velocities, and really got into the technical part of the game. So uh, check that out next time if you didn't. When they showed the close-up of Mike Ford hitting the home run, they said, kind of looks like Babe Ruth a little bit there. All I could see was John Boy. He looks just like John Boy without a beard. I don't. Am I the only one who sees that? Araldus Chapman is coming back tomorrow, but the bullpen was very good tonight. Adam Adovino came in in relief of Jay Happ uh, with the man on first base. He worked out of the jam. And then Chad Green was terrific again. Look at their ERAs. Well, listen to their ERAs. Uh, Adam Adovino is at 1.08 for the season, and Chad Green is at 0.71. That is total dominance. So uh, those guys need to keep doing whatever the hell they're doing, keep eating whatever the hell they're having for breakfast. Uh, but good night for the Yankees, and I will be back tomorrow with the pregame. Thanks for watching.